What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Rams Brothers. I'm your host, Dean, and I'm joined, as always, by my brother and the other great host of this show, Nick. And Nick, we got Rams joint practice today with the Texans in Houston. We got a preseason game coming up with the Texans on Saturday. But first and most importantly, how are you, my good brother? I'm good, man. Things are good. Uh, Dean and I hit our autograph goal, but that does not mean that we want people to stop signing up for autograph. Um, but because we hit our goal, I am giving away this large Rams t-shirt, unworn, untouched by human hands until this very moment in this episode. Uh, so stay tuned till the end, and I will give you uh, what you got to do to figure out how to win that puppy. But Dean, if you want to flash the autograph um, promo code that we have going on, sign up for autograph and use our promo code. It's a great app where if you listen to Rams content, if you read articles, you will gain points and those points will help you buy tickets for games. It's a fantastic Tom Brady co-founded app that we love being um, sponsored by. Yes, absolutely. Join Autograph Interface is awesome. Support other Rams podcasters, other content creators, earn points, use those points to buy tickets, Rams merch, all that good stuff. All right, cool. We, uh, we chatted through Autograph, so let's get that off of our screen. I also want to remind everybody to make sure to like and subscribe. A lot of good content coming your guys' way. Uh, we're going to talk through the joint practice today, all the news we heard from Texans Rams joint practice, which I think is even more valuable than the preseason information. Obviously, preseason is great for depth, but it, to, to be able to hear and see what's going on with the first team going against another yeah. first team in the Houston Texans and a really talented organization with a great head coach, I think is really, really important. So like and subscribe, we're going to talk through that today. And then obviously the preseason game we'll chat through on Sunday. There is your like and subscribe reminder. We also wanted to chat through the injury news that broke today because good news, all good injury news. Matthew Stafford took all of the first team reps as of today. So Matthew Stafford is back. He is, he's ready to go. I think that this is something that wouldn't have held him out of a game if it had occurred during the season. So I think it's, it's really great to see Matthew Stafford back. Uh, all first team reps, it suggests that his hamstring is, is really fully healthy. It's ready to go at this point. Um, Sean McVay also commented that Jonah Jackson is expected to work back in next week. And Darius Williams is expected to ramp up his workload for next week as well. So the next players that we need updates on, it's great to hear that Darius Williams is ready to go. As of next week, Jonah Jackson had that scapula injury. Uh, he's going to be ready to go, likely for week one. Same with Darius Williams. The next players that we need updates on are Rob Havenstein, right? Rob Havenstein, I think he was stepped on in a practice about two weeks ago, so he's dealing with a lower body ankle injury. We obviously need an update with Puka Nakua, right? Everybody needs an update with Puka. He had that bursitis in his knee, so I think they're just being extra cautious with him, trying to ramp him back up. He wasn't on the field today in any capacity, um, so we want to make sure that he's up to speed, ready to go for week one. He's likely going to be. McVay mentioned there's no structural damage in his knee, so he should be totally fine. And I think that this is the tandem trio quad grouping of wide receivers that everybody's excited to see. We're not neglecting Tutu Atwell here, but D Rob is going to be getting all the first team reps in terms of the X receiver. So you're going to see Cooper in the in the F in the slot, Puka in the Z. Uh, D Rob in the X, and then Jordan Whittington is going to be in very, very important depth uh, for Puka and Cup. And you'll see also Tutu Atwell in rotation with Demarcus Robinson at some point. Snap counts decreased towards the end of last season. So you're going to get much more Demarcus Robinson and then scattered Tutu Atwell. But I think, Nick, there's a lot going on with Xavier Smith, too. So Xavier I Smith is pushing to make the roster as well. I think this is the best wide receiver group we have seen with the Rams since. Cooks, Cup, Woods, to be completely honest. And that's and that's with Odell previously being on our team, but Woods was down during that tenure. So I I think this is our best mold with a ride with a wide receiver core, if all of them can stay healthy, to make like to have one of the best, highest splash Miami Dolphins type offenses this year. So that's all really exciting. And I believe Puka and Rob and uh Alec 
will be fine come week one. I think it's just all precautionary. It's creeping up on us, though. It's going to be here before you know it. It's, we have this week of preseason, and then we're off, and then right into Sunday night football for us. I hate that it's the last game of the of week one because the anticipation is just going to be yeah, absolutely falling for that entire <laughs> week. But I'm very excited. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because Jameer Gibbs, we know and a lot of people who are drafting in fantasy and have been following the lines know that he's dealing with a little bit of a hamstring. Nick, is he on your squad? Yeah. <laughs> and then Penny Sewell also was banged up with an injury yesterday. So two injuries, top players to keep an eye on for Sunday Night Football. It's only 17 days away at this point. But you mentioned Bobby Trees. Can you see Bobby Trees in this photo? He's lingering in the back. It looks like Cooper Cup was approached by a fan. It's not a fan. It's C.J. Stroud. But Cooper Cup and Bobby Trees were chopping it up before C.J. Stroud had approached him. Somebody caught it on video and shared it on X. So Bobby Trees, for the Houston Texans, it's a shame he gets a little bit overshadowed with offensive skill players like Joe Mixon and Tank Dell and Stephon Diggs. But Robert Woods still very much on the team. Um, and, you know, with the injury of Puka Nakua, you know, it, he, they just remind me of each other. So it's, it's good to see that relationship continuing. I'm sure there will be a picture shared later on X today with Sean McVay and Bobby Trees because McVay was hanging out with Michael Brockers a little bit earlier on. J.J. Watt was at practice. Um, so I think there's just good camaraderie, as we mentioned in previous episodes across the board. So uh, I want to get Trees into a, on two teams that. Yeah. We're in like the very depths of of hell, and now have like risen to the top of the Rams. Yeah, that's true. It's really impressive. So I just shout out to I try to give him a shout out as much as I can. I love Robert Woods. Absolutely, yeah. Everybody loves Bobby Trees. Who doesn't? Um, and that the greatest show on surf when it was revamped in 2017 with Bobby Trees and Cooper Cup as a rookie was just too much fun to watch. Um, and all the news from joint practice was pretty positive, I think, for the most part. Here's a shot of the Rams at joint practice as of today. They were in Houston today for their fourth and final joint practice of the summer. They're practicing with the Texans, as we mentioned, who will then they'll face on the finale on Sunday afternoon at NRG Stadium in Houston. I originally thought the game was Saturday, but correction, I think it is on Sunday afternoon. With no starters expected to play for the Rams in Sunday's game, I think it's, as I mentioned, really important for Los Angeles, all their top players, to be able to get on the field, be able to go against a really talented first team, uh, especially like with the, the talent that the Texans have on the offensive line and the wide receiver position, made it an extremely valuable day for the Rams' young defense. There are defensive linemen, everybody up front, um, and even their young and veteran defensive backs to get in some solid work. So what we're seeing so far in terms of the joint practice news, Matthew Stafford, as I mentioned, is on the field. He participated in all of the first team reps. But Sean McVay mentioned that he could not have been more impressed and wasn't surprised at all by the Texans and D'Amico Ryans, said first class organization, we got a lot of good work today, exactly what we had hoped for, which is perhaps a shot at the Dallas Cowboys for- I think it's, Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, he has seen lots of teams and how they operate and the NFL is topsy-turvy where you would just be shocked that some of these multi-billion dollar franchises can be run so poorly uh, like it's just a, a, an example in the Texan division, the Jacksonville Jaguars hiring Urban Meyer a couple of years ago, and just that being the biggest train wreck of all time. Totally. I think the Rams are, as Colin Coward would say, in that like America's team echelon of just well-run organizations from top to bottom. And McVeigh is seeing that now with the Texans, which has not always been that way. So that's, I think the highest compliment you could really give them was just, you know, yeah, he was I think saying so too. everything flew with flying colors. I, I think so too. You're totally right. And I'm seeing a lot of people have commented Rams Texans Super Bowl. So it's definitely in the back of people's minds that they're two of the better teams. I think in both conferences, you're going to see them finish towards the top um, of each conference. I would imagine if everybody stays healthy, but in terms of quarterback play, like CJ Stroud is so overly complimentary of Matthew Stafford. Stroud said, I wasn't trying to be a fanboy with Matthew Stafford, but he's one of my favorite quarterbacks. So it was great to ask him a lot of questions. You love what you see from CJ Stroud. There was also um, a shot at Jimmy G from Landry Locker mentioned that watching Jimmy G hurts my eyes more than the sunscreen that runs through them on hot days. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> wow. Taking a shot at our guy there, Nick. What's your thoughts on that? 
I did not see that up until this very moment. That's hilarious. So I'm not going to take any offense to that. I still think that he's going to be better if we ever need to see him this season than Stetson Bennett. So I agree. If, I mean, I everything I've heard so far about Jimmy G has been positive. So that's the first negative thing I heard. That's funny. I mean, he he was not good last year on the Raiders. I'm not going to act no. like he was a you know five star recruit and we have the best. Back up in the league. It's but. just so funny to see the difference of opinions on a player like Matthew Stafford and Jimmy Garoppolo. But some other uh, interesting news that came out of Rams Texans joint practice today from the Texans beat the Rams offense struggled early on. There were no runs over four yards, and Matthew Stafford had to check down underneath a ton. I, like I mentioned, there's talent on both sides of the ball for the Texans. C.J. Stroud, Joe Mixon, Stephon Diggs, Tank Dell on offense. Daniil Hunter and Mario Edwards both had what would have been sacks against Matthew Stafford. C.J. Stroud hit Stephon Diggs for a 50-yard touchdown on the first play of practice, but the ref said that Diggs' foot was potentially out of bounds, so a little bit of controversy there. But you could imagine these young defensive backs – if they were in rotation uh, without Darius Williams on the field. And Trey White was very, very vocal about the humidity in Texas and Houston. He was like, dude, it's it's like 95 degrees, 70, 77% humidity in Houston today. So it was probably really difficult for these guys to stay on the field as, as long as possible in the heat of August. Um, the Texans also were without Laramie Tunsil and Titus Howard up front. So the Rams' defensive front was getting after C.J. Stroud a lot often and early, which is which is great to see. You know, I think this is one of the defenses that isn't getting a ton of credit, but to see them generate a ton of pressure and force a fumble on Steven Sims in one of the first three series, I think that the Rams' defense, I mean, they haven't given up a single touchdown in preseason yet. And all the reports throughout this offseason have suggested that they're going to be really good. They're going to be young. They're going to be fast. And this unit under Chris Shula, if we can go another preseason game without giving up a touchdown, I think the depth – and just the camaraderie on the sidelines is going to be up in terms of like, you know, how we're going to approach the first game against the Lions and Chris Shula's schemes and everything he's been implementing over the last five, six months. So all great, great to see. Um, in terms of the offense, Stafford also threw an interception to Kalen Bullock. It was a tipped pass from uh, Kamir Lassiter as um, he was he was manning Cooper Cup for the majority of the day. So you'll see probably a lot of videos of Kamari uh, Lassiter manning up Cooper Cup. Um, and then Cup got him back with an incredible back shoulder catch, which was shared on X. And I think it'll be probably shared multiple times later today. So you guys will see that. And then plenty of completions from Stafford and Jimmy G to guys like Cooper Cup, Colby Parkinson, Hunter Long, Jordan Whittington. And we talked about Puka still seems like he's being held out for precautionary reasons. But Good. there's plenty of depth. If you need to start Jordan Whittington on week one, Puka's not able to go. I think they're going to be totally fine. Their yeah. tight end depth is really solid. Colby Parkinson. I feel like is probably the most underrated signing for this team this offseason. So I think they're in a in a pretty decent spot if Puka, for whatever reason, isn't fully recovered and can't go 100% on week one. If he's not 100% week one and they hold him off and they are completely cautious with him, which I don't think they will do, I think they'll try to get him out there as much as possible because he is such a game-breaking wide receiver. It yeah. would be – it could be the Winnington game where he just goes out there and puts on a show where they're, where they're really like doubling cup because Puka is out. So now they're, you know, it's kind of similar to what they had going on in the Super Bowl before OBJ went down where he was kind of the entire game plan because everybody was so focused on Cooper cup. And, you know, that could be something that we're going to see in Jordan's prediction of Winnington finding the end zone quite often could come to flourish in this year. So hopefully that, isn't the case, all things considered, because we want to see uh, Puka out there as much as possible. But if we do live in that reality, then, you know, I I still have 100% faith. And I really – this is just a thought on Nick's picks. I really love Rams at plus three and a half. Even if yeah, it is so do I. So I, I love that line. We covered yeah. it in the playoff game last year. I think we can win outright, but plus three and a half is a really nice sweet spot. Yeah, I also kind of like the under in that game because it's 51 and a half as of right now. And I think that the Rams defense is going to be flying around the ball a little bit. So, I mean, you, you expect prime time, probably high scoring. But first week of the season, teams still getting their kinks out, maybe some injuries on both sides. Um, so I think it's going to be interesting. But that's why I love the Jordan Whittington pick because anything happens to Coop, anything happens to Puka, Jordan Whittington is going to be on the field. Um, and the offense is still going to be able to operate at a really high capacity. So I just I love the pick a ton. I think he's going to be great. Um, and then in other news, 
This is outside of the joint practice. The Rams signed former running back, uh, former Seahawks running back, Sheroderick Thompson. So he signed with the Saints as an undrafted rookie last year. He ended up with Seattle come July. Only played in one game, was on the field for two snaps and didn't touch the ball. But he's a former Texas Tech back who was third all time in rushing touchdowns with 40. So they added some depth. You would assume that that means Zach Evans or Boston Scott were banged up. I think they both came out of the last preseason game. And there's some much needed depth in terms of the final preseason game to be able to get some running backs, some snaps. And then additionally, they waived Jerry Jacobs, which was the cornerback that they got from Detroit due to an injury settlement. that The Rams never disclosed what the injury specifically was that he suffered, but it does leave room for guys like Trey Tomlinson. Tomlinson was a guy we were afraid may not make the roster. Charles yeah. Woods, Josh Wallace, and Sean Jolly, however, all have progressed throughout the preseason thus far. So just some other quick news and notes in terms of what's going on with some transactions with the Rams. So Sheroderick Thompson on the roster, for, on the 90-man roster, and uh, Jerry Jacobs no longer with the team. Yeah, we'll see Thompson 100% come Sunday for this preseason game because exactly why you laid out, I they probably want to give Scott a rest based on how he was last week. So that'll be interesting. Uh, Stenson Bennett will be out there once again. So we have one more Stenson Bennett game to watch this season, I pray. It's the last one. But I'm just really excited. We are getting so close every day. We are one day closer to the greatest television show ever. So I'm so stoked, happy to be doing it with you. And now, before we leave, Dean, yeah, please. to win this shirt, I'm going to need you to tweet at the Rams Brothers, your go-to Mario Kart character. And I'm going to decide who randomly from that Gets the shirt, but you got to tweet your favorite Mario Kart character to the Rams Brothers account. Now I'm going to have to filter out Dry Bowser, Toad, Yoshi, all these comments. Dry Bowser, crazy pull, crazy so first excited. pull. <laughs> I the love more it. you yeah. get, maybe you have a better chance. That's all I'm going to say. But thank you guys for listening. Like and subscribe. Download Autograph. Use our referral code. It means so much to us that you guys are here with us for this season. So from us to you, thank you so much. Yes, we love you guys. We'll chat with you again very soon coming out of the Texans-Rams preseason game. And as always, go Rams. Go Rams. Peace.